on Facebook, hopefully, and on Instagram, and on YouTube. So hopefully you're all there. Hello, hello. Uh, bonjour, bonjour, ça va bien. <laughs> hello, nice to see you all joining. Hello, hello. Hi, hi John, hi Josh, hi Jose. Hi Super, nice to see you all. Thank you for joining and um, hopefully this will work well. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi everyone. Polygot Gathering. Wow, good to see you guys online. Um, really looking forward to the event, the Polygot Gathering online at the end of the month, where I'll be speaking, of course, about um, when we can say that we speak a language, which is, I think, a topic that I get asked a lot. Hi everyone. Hi, Felicitas. Hello, hello. Nice to see you all. Wow. <laughs> Vixa. <laughs> hey Vicky. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, hey everyone. How, how are you all doing? Nice to see you all. Buonasera, tutto bene? Si. Hey, tutto bene. Hi, Vic. <laughs> Antonio, come va? Tutto bene, Italia? Hello from the Netherlands. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone. Wow, so many of you joining. So whether you're on Instagram or on um, YouTube or on Facebook, I'm here to answer some questions about uh, languages for you today. And... Um, Hello, okay, we're getting people coming on, on YouTube as well. So good to see you all. Well, Ophelia, hi. I thought if you're going, it's going very fast on Instagram. So I have to warn you that if I miss your question, feel free to ask it again if I don't get to you, okay? Hi from Argentina, wow, from Cambodia. Can I speak Cambodian? Unfortunately, not yet, no. Hopefully one day I'll get to speak Cambodian. Hello, zdravo. Hiva <laughs> peva. Nice to see you. Oh, thank you for your very kind words, Peggy. I appreciate it. You're very sweet. Um, hi, Quen. Yeah, nice to see you. Wow, from California. Wow, desde California. ¿Qué tal? ¿Todo bien? Winnipeg, Canada. Wow. So far away, all you people from all over the world. I feel extremely honored. Anatole Blurat, Arabia, Masmur, Welekin, Patakalam. Hello, Shui. Let me a little bit of Arabic, unfortunately. Uh, Jenny, hello there. Hi. Wow. Can I ask you a question? Of course, you can ask me a question, Peggy. You're first in to ask me a question today. So please go ahead. Um, frequency lists useful? It's a good question. So Kebby's asking me on YouTube whether or not frequency lists are useful. I personally don't use them. Um, some people find them useful and they swear by them. Um, I've, I've got to say, when it comes to language learning, I often find that it's really important to find your own groove, find your own niche. What works well for you may not work well for someone else and vice versa. So it's always good to find what works well for you, I think. Um, I've, I would always say that um, if, you, if you say that learning, for example, the most common words is something that you find useful, something that you get to use, then go for it. Um, for me personally, I find actually learning in context, learning things I particularly need uh, more useful. So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say, for example, my job is, uh, I don't know, an architect or a brain surgeon. Um, the terms and the words that I would most use as an architect or a brain surgeon would not be in the most high frequency words usually. Um, that I would want to talk about what I do, about my own situation. So that's kind of why I say context for me is definitely king. I hope that makes sense. Hello from, oh, Michigan, Canada. Wow, Pennsylvania. Hi, Jim. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Deborah. Hi, everyone joining. Salut, salut, ça va? Ça va bien? Uh, Comédienne des langues. Attends, tu vas me faire une blague là? <laughs> On va voir ce que tu vas dire. Um, Nice to see you coming in. Wow, wow, so many people from Paris. Hi, Carlos. <laughs> Carlos, how are you? Uh, nice to see you. It's really good to see you after Edinburgh. So if you don't know Carlos Yebra Lopez, he did a really great presentation that we've got on the Polygot Conference channel now. Um, I just realized that on YouTube, I'm logged in at the Polygon Conference <laughs> thing instead of on my own. So please do, do excuse me for doing that. Um, what I will do, is I will actually transfer this over to my speaking fluently one um, as soon as I can. Sorry for that, anyone who didn't catch me on speaking fluently, but I was on Polygot Conference instead. My bad. 
that's what you get for not paying too much attention and rushing. There we go. So, hello from Mexico. Hola, Carlos. Todo bien? Estamos bien. Uh, a ver. Farhad. Hello, Farhad. Hello. Wow. So many of you are joining here on, on Instagram. It's very difficult to keep up. So please do bear with me if I do miss anyone out. Hello to everyone who's joining on Instagram. It's really good to see you. Hola do Brasil também. Daniel, tudo bem? Tudo bem? And very well, thank you. You put a really good. Yes, nice to see you. Hello from Michigan on the here. Wow, fantastic to see you all. Hola desde el País Vasco. Sermos. <laughs> Uh, nice to see you all coming in. Hi, Zaki. Hello. So what's a YouTube channel? The YouTube channel is actually Speaking Fluently uh, or Richard Simcott. But also at the moment, by mistake, I've logged into Polyglot Conference and gone live on the Polyglot Conference YouTube channel. My bad. I'll transfer the video onto the Speaking Fluently channel afterwards and, um, and move it over because uh, clearly the speaking fluently channel and talking about what I do and the Polyglot conference is slightly separate. Happy, as I've made that mistake, happy to answer any basic questions about the Polyglot conference if you need me to. Um, my bad, right? Um, so yeah, okay, moving forward with the questions. Let me see what I have here on the different areas. Let's see. Uh, Oh, muchas gracias, John. <laughs> I really appreciate you saying that. It's very nice of you. Have you ever studied the Occitan language? Um, I haven't actually, no. Um, I've looked at it, obviously, because it's an, a Latin language, but I've never studied it properly. Um, but yeah, I mean, why not? I like every language. I mean, there's no language that I would say I would never look at or study or get into it. I think that the, the important thing is that you enjoy the language, right? And that you've got a reason to do it. And I think that's the really important thing. Um, okay, so super, you wanna learn Spanish and Portuguese and your native language is English. Any good ideas to do both at the same time? Honestly, I think it really depends on the individual. Some people find it no problem at all doing two languages from the same family that are similar. Some people find it a nightmare. Uh, I always say, try it. If you find it's confusing to do both, you can leave one, carry on with the other one, take it to a fairly decent level where you feel very confident getting around and speaking and using it, and then go back to, whether it's Spanish you leave or Portuguese, go back to the other one, um, from time to time to see how that mixing is going, whether or not it works, okay? Uh, so I think that's the, the what I would say, I, and that's what I've done, and that's what I've seen over years, um, you know, with people uh, learning lots of languages that are the same or from the same family or very similar in some ways, whether it's similar because they're from the same language family or the pronunciation. Wow, I'm loving the hearts, guys. Thank you so much for sending all these hearts on Instagram. This is so sweet. Um, Farhad, unfortunately, no Persian. I do not speak Persian yet. One day, who knows? On Facebook, right, I can see lots of people joining. Nice to see you. Arunas, see ya, see ya. Hodge, <laughs> Uh Oh, Boris Michelle, nice to see you on Facebook. You're my Instagram friend. What are you doing on Facebook? You should be on Instagram. Um, so Michelle Frolla is learning um, North Sami with me. At the moment, we're in the same class. So that's North Sami, Boris, uh, which is a really cool language. Hello from Israel. Hello, Oleg. Mashallah. Major Osraimon. Hey, see ya. Hello from the Philippines. Nice to see you from the Philippines, Lanjo. Hello. Oh, okay. Kitty Paul. Ah, okay. Um, okay. Am I Thai? Unfortunately, I can't read Thai very well. Um, put pasan it no Thai crap. Um, the uh, can do. <laughs> my my do my do. <laughs> um, but I can I can I can definitely uh, say a little bit in Thai. Salut da Miami. Tutto bene, Claudio? Eh, tanto tempo, veramente. Eh, estudiando el español ahora, muy bien, muy bien. Eso sí que me gusta, estudiar el español. Es un idioma muy importante. <ríe> si vas a venir a México, Claudio, tienes que aprender el español. Y también algo de Nahuatl, otra cosa también, ¿no? Um, greetings from Algeria. Hello from Algeria. Wow, so good to see so many of you coming on. Sprichst du Deutsch? Ja, das kann ich auch, natürlich. Ich habe in Deutschland gewohnt und Deutsch ist eigentlich für mich ähm, eine von, der Spra davon, von den Sprachen, die ich zu Hause spreche. Also, also für mich ist eine 
eine sehr wichtige Sprache für die Arbeiten auch zu Hause. Ich meine, ich liebe Deutsch. <lacht> Hi Emma, Emma Cunningham, why nice to see you. Hey, nice to see you all joining here. Kemma, Kenneth, wow, Zaki, wow. Oh, so many people joining. It's so good to see you all coming in. Have you how do I find Polish? Um, I find it um, quite nice to, to study, actually. I like Polish a lot. Um, it's, uh, I think the pronunciation sometimes can feel a bit weird in the beginning. Um, but my thing with Polish was I'd studied Czech at university in Prague for a year before I went to Poland and learned Polish. And so it, I found it a lot easier after that, for sure, especially for being able to speak. So to start speaking, I still make lots of mistakes in Polish. Sometimes if I've spoken in other Slavic languages before, I have to speak Polish again. And my Polish can feel influenced by other other Slavic languages and therefore might sound a bit weird sometimes. Um, I say with Polish, stick with it. Also, when you get to cases, learn things that you need to say instead of fixating on the grammar or rules. I feel that that is really the most important thing to do with these languages is to, to learn what you need to say. And don't worry too much about grammar per se. Um, although grammar is something that you have to learn eventually. It's um, something that I find I learn with the language while I'm learning it in context, while I'm learning it, speaking to people, reading things. I find I pick it up and it becomes more intuitive, almost like when you learn your first language, right? Um, so yeah, don't worry too much about learning lots of tables. Um, it's sometimes good to do to get them in your head. And especially if you're that kind of learner that you like to learn systematically, it can help just to sort of keep you calm. Definitely learning um, while, you're, while you're speaking is really important. Um, okay, so learning vocabulary. Vocabulary, again, vocabulary I find is something that you need to learn. It's a really good question um, though about, about vocabulary. It's, it's one that comes up again and again. Um, so be conscious of what you're learning. Keep it in your head. Try and use it as often as you can. Language learning is over learning. So what that means is basically they're patterns that you learn over and over again until they become automatic. And that's what language learning really is. That's how we learned our first language, by making mistakes over and over again, being corrected, saying the same kinds of things over and over again. And we do, that's what we do naturally. And that's what we need to do. And with vocabulary, so it's the stuff that you use, except that you're gonna forget more than you currently know. <laughs> then once you've accepted that, everything's great you really learn and you start you start flying with the language um that's how i find it happens to me still i do find that um the more languages i learn the more hooks i have to remember things so i can associate words with different words in my head with different sounds i find that helps a lot um but for sure it takes time for me as well um really good follow-up question actually for me here the polyglot traveler just asked me how i'm getting on with maori I love Maori. It's um, a language I started um, ooh, a few months ago now. And I would say hello to everyone joining actually on YouTube as well and on Facebook. I'm sorry I'm not getting to you all straight away, but um, I will do my best to keep up as quickly as I can. But big hello to you all joining. Thank you so much for coming. It's great to see you. the Intrepid Guide is on YouTube too. And so are people coming in from San Diego, from Mexico, from all over, fantastic. Um, so yeah, with Maori, for me, it's been a really interesting ride. Um, I started learning it a few months ago, I guess. When was it? Maybe January. I had a kind of a month pause with my Maori and there were quite a few things going on for me that meant I couldn't dedicate time to language learning for a month. And then I got back into it again, maybe a few months ago. And um, it's taken me on a really interesting journey because I, um, I've reconnected with some thoughts and some ideas and communities that I really identify with um, in terms of speaking a minority language of a country or being from a minority group as well. Um, obviously because my family is English Welsh and the Welsh side of our family, uh, the history of what happened with the Welsh language in the United Kingdom really helps me to identify with communities like uh, Maori language culture. Um, and also when I was in the US, I spent some time in uh, Minnesota and with the Ojibwe um, communities there, I can 
really see parallels between uh, lots of indigenous places and countries and languages around the world. Um, and it's taken me on this really interesting journey actually learning Maori. But in terms of the language itself, um, I find sometimes it quite confusing where the a lot of words have similar sounds to them, but they're slightly different in that there's either a longer, there's a macron over one of the vowels that changes it. Or like the very typical example in Maori is keke, which is cake, and keke, which is armpit. So be careful which one you sniff. Sniffing a cake's nice, sniffing an armpit, not so nice. <laughs> you gotta be very careful with Maori. But yeah, I love it and I'm gonna carry on with that. I think it's fantastic. Um, hello, Brita from Finland. Hello, hello. Wow, we've got so many people joining here. Nice to see you all. Hello, hello. Um, Ere ship, a langophilia, um, poor. Flash ship, ship, say, banoi, no much of me. The Katu came here, the Jewish ship, as she drew her deed, no, no scoop. The Permu, as the Shum, no still see. The philosophy of the Jewish ship. The Eastern Permu and you, you do some some bookur. The um, dot the philosophy me mir. Pani and can even me me source in the internet and in don your chto chto yaf the Jewish ship. The philosophy per some time to endrishma the perket pani um flash um and doi dot philosophy me mir. Um, uh, sepse në karantin, unë jam vetë në shtëpi dhe s'kan asë një plan për të, <laughs> për të, për të shkoj në, 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 në qitet dhe edhe për mua në fakt është për mua shumë, shumë më rënd vetë në qitet sepse unë flasë vetë në uh, gjerë shumë, shumë të lehtë uh, në, në një rezë këtu është vetë në mirë ditë, si jeni, mirë, falëm nderit the Ashtuas, Netani, Messus in the internet, can shumjet shumjerts interessant, the rest per mu menir. And yeah, so a long feel a po a punga a puyani, a po an English Perian, a Macedonian, a Kosov. Uh, okay, how old am I? I am 43 at the moment. Um, hope that answers your question. <laughs> 43, I don't get asked my age very often anymore. So it's interesting to be asked my age. Sorry if I laughed, but yes, I'm 43. Um, <laughs> Сейчас я говорил э, об этом, что ситуация в России э, со свирсом, и это было интересно, это было очень интересно для меня слушать, что это как в Москве сейчас со, Рус, э, со свирсом там, потому что на очень сложной ситуации здесь в Македонии, и я не знаю, как это будет. Thought person, I do understand what you're that you've written about Brit, uh, about uh, Breton. I don't speak Breton. I understand some of it because it's obviously a language related to Welsh. So I've studied Welsh, and I can understand some Breton, but not to speak, unfortunately. Um, I got some people asking to be in my live my live thing. I don't know how that works. But if anybody knows, please let me know for next time. I ought to learn the Sicilian language, maybe, who knows? Maybe I will one day. How many languages do I know? Really difficult to say how many languages I know. I studied over 50, but um, in terms of speaking them, it changes. And I let you decide if I speak your language. <laughs> if you decide I don't speak your language, I don't speak your language. If you decide I speak your language, I speak your language. <laughs> I don't really mind actually. If people say that I speak it badly, well, it, it's very kind to receive nice comments, of course. Um, sometimes I'll speak a language better than others. It depends what happens on the day. Um, depends what I've been speaking before. It depends on so many things. Um, but yeah, I let you decide. And that's so you can decide how many languages I speak. <laughs> uh, I, I use a lot for work and for, for travel and for, um, for for my daily life. So at home we speak five languages, for example. We speak uh, Macedonian, English, 
French, Spanish, and German. And um, and then outside, I use uh, Turkish, Albanian, uh, Serbian, Bulgarian, Greek, and uh, a few others like that just around uh, the area where we live in the Balkans. And then uh, for work, I'll use other languages too, like Russian. Um, I'll have to read in the Scandinavian languages. Um, obviously, Dutch, um, sort of bigger languages like that, Italian, um, and a number of others from time to time too. And then obviously with you guys, I get to speak lots of other languages as well, so which is amazing. I love that. Hello to everyone joining. Wow, there's so many of you. It's amazing. Who gaat het met je Nederlands? Ja, goed hoor. Who gaat het met jou Nederlands? Ja, fiets Amsterdam. Ja, dan uh, waarschijnlijk goed, hè? Ja, dus ja, hij is goed. Ik vind uh, Nederlands voor mij is een uh, geweldige taal. Ik heb, ik heb Nederlands in uh, Nederland opgepikt, natuurlijk. Dus ja, voor mij is het uh, gewoon normaal Nederlands te praten. <laughs> ja, ik heb niet, uh, uh, niet kwijt geraakt. <laughs> ik kan nog steeds spreken. Ja, tamelijk goed, hopelijk. <laughs> hopelijk wel. Ja, wat denk jij dan? <laughs> is het goed? <laughs> uh, hello from Czech Republic. Hello there, good to see you. Aho, Jaksema, Jaksema, no dobrze. Ahoj, také, ano. No, mluvím asi, no, češtinu studoval jsem na univerzitě, takže no, to bylo pro mě asi jako normálně, že no, mluví česky, ale teďka nemám s kým mluvit, a, ale no, ještě mluvím, mluvím. Ano, takže. Okay, Russian. What's the best way to learn Russian? Best way to learn Russian is to speak Russian. <laughs> so to learn it slowly, surely, not get stressed out by all of the cases. Uh, exactly the same as for Polish, I guess. Uh, learn what you need. Use it as often as you can. Consider the language. Speak whenever you can. Speak often. Speak um, and say things that you need. If you focus too much on the grammar with a Slavic language, particularly with lots of cases like Russian, Polish, Czech, Slovak, Ukrainian, Belarus, Belarusian, um, Sorbian, any of them, uh, Slovene, for example, if, if, you, if you concentrate too much on the grammar, you can feel almost bogged down by the grammar. So I say focus on what you need for when you need it. Don't worry too much about um, getting it all right straight away. People will understand. Como vai com o português? Ah, acho que tá bom. Uh, olá, tudo bem? Então, se para mim é uma língua que tenho estudado na universidade na, na Inglaterra, então, para mim, sim, é uma língua que eu estudei português na universidade na Inglaterra, o português de Portugal, e depois eu fui para o Brasil e, e entendi que para começar com a, com a gente brasileira tenho que ter um, um sotaque mais aberto. Então, eu mudei mais para o sotaque brasileiro, depois de uh, um mês, dois, assim, uh, estudando português uh, em linha com a Itoque. Então, agora, tá bom, uh, acho que é ótimo para falar, para comunicar as minhas ideias no português. Não tenho problemas, então, se você quiser, pode escrever sem problemas no português, eu posso uh, responder também. Hello to everyone, hello, Polly. Wow, so many of you joining, so cool. Um, which language do I recommend learning first, French or Spanish? I would say, oh, depends what your needs are. <laughs> um, for me, I learned French first. Um, it was a language I learned because I learned at school. So yes, it was uh, good uh, to learn French first. I think just with the pronunciation of French, it takes a bit of time to get the pronunciation right, maybe if you're learning it, especially old, as you're, when you're older. A difficult one. Um, I'd say go with the one you can use most because that's the one you can get to a high level quickest first and then go for the other one. That's what I say. Okay. Um, Eros, hello. Hello to everyone. Wow, Amelia. So good to see so many of you coming and joining me. Thank you very much. Um, I think I'll learn over 100 languages done. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not counting the languages really, to be honest. I don't find the numbers so important. I've got to be honest with you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Welsh, you want to learn Welsh. John, yeah, learn Welsh. It's a cool language. Um, it means a lot to me, of course, because um, it's part of my heritage. Um, so, wow. Oh, wow. Vraiment, c'est que j'ai l'équipe de Gathering de Pologne. Oui. Donc, euh, euh, j'espère maintenant que, en fait, avec le Gathering, maintenant, je suis très content parce que ça va être en ligne. Donc, on va, on va tout faire. On va faire les présentations en ligne. Moi aussi, je... Je fais partie de ça. Je n'organise pas Gathering, mais euh, l'équipe fait vraiment 
un travail euh, extraordinaire. Je suis hyper content avec les gens. Euh, je, je sais que c'est une équipe fantastique. Je suis super heureux de faire partie de ce que va passer en mai. Euh, donc, euh, moi, je suis hyper content. J'espère que vous allez venir en nombre, en grand nombre, pour, un, pour faire partie de... Euh, de la célébration des, des langues étrangères, de l'apprentissage des langues étrangères avec nous et des cultures, bien sûr, ce qui fait grande partie de ce qu'on fait dans la communauté euh, d'apprentissage des langues étrangères en ligne. Et moi, j'adore ça. J'en fais, fais partie pendant plusieurs années et je l'adore. <rire> um, OK, wow. Uh, Comment est-ce que tu as Tres idiomes, uh, tres idiomes en casa. En casa, tres idiomes... Três em casa, eu acho que para mim, eu tenho cinco, então para mim é assim. Eu falo com a, minha, com a pequena em inglês, uh, espanhol, francês, alemão. Então, principalmente eu falo um, francês, porque é a língua que temos uh, estudos para, para comunicar, comunicação uh, cotidiana. E depois disso, acho que com o inglês também, porque tem a escola em inglês. E depois disso, temos como não ser como uma hora para fazer as coisas do espanhol também pela mão, porque agora tem 12 anos. Então, não é tão importante fazer um granquê em cada idioma, porque já sabe falar. E então, não tem muitas dificuldades para, para realmente continuar com as línguas. Então, fazemos assim, mas com os meninos pais pequenos, é importante dividir o dia em várias línguas também, fazer atividades interessantes para o menino. Isso é uma coisa muito útil para os meninos. Então, eu acho que fazer isso é a coisa mais importante para fazer. Isso é o meu conselho mais, acho que mais importante. Fazer a conexão entre a língua e a atividade. Isso é a coisa mais importante para o menino. E também tem também como consequência de falar para o adulto, é muito importante conseguir falar e continuar a falar a língua uh, muito, uh, sem, sem, sem dizer ah, agora é difícil, o uh, menino não quer, não quer falar comigo, o menino não quer responder. Isso são os problemas que temos com os meninos porque para um menino não quer aprender muitas línguas uh, assim da naturaleza. Pode ser que se, seja um, um menino muito raro com, com um desejo muito forte para aprender um, várias línguas. Também é possível. Mas, geralmente, uma pessoa quer aprender uma língua para comunicação, para comunicar, comunicar as ideias que tem na, na cabeça. Então, para um menino é assim, é igual. Então... Uh, é, é sempre, às vezes, muito, provavelmente, para muitas, muitas pessoas, é uma questão realmente de, de lutar com o um menino para, para falar a língua. Então, a coisa mais interessante e mais importante para fazer é falar, falar, continuar, continuar a falar, mas não fazer como fingir de não com, é, compreender a outra língua, se já você compreende a língua sem problemas. Não tem sentido nenhum realmente, para mim. Então, continua assim, cada dia, diariamente, falando a língua. Ok. So, let me go back to the other ones. Hello to everyone. Hello from Phoenix. Wow. Ok. Uh, ok, merhaba. Uh, what language is that? I don't know which language I'm speaking. Sorry. If I speak a language that's weird, don't worry. I always change back to another language. So, if you don't understand the language I'm speaking right now, I'll always go back to a language you understand at some point. No problem at all. Eu gosto muito do acento português. Assim, meu sotaque português está em graça. Pode ser também porque um sotaque mais com entre o português, Portugal e português, do Brasil com sotaque mais internacional também, porque não sou português. Não sou brasileiro tampouco. Ok, so cool. Let me see. Uh, прекрасный русский, спасибо, Амир. Ты... <laughs> И ты тоже говоришь очень хорошо по-русски. <laughs> ты знаешь. <laughs> um, it's a unique language. Шум мир фармин дерет шум лингофилия. Ну, Косово. А, Амир. Что ж ты шум? Что ж ты шум? Мир. 
<laughs> Inga stovish to me. Po po po. Ah, bye bye. Bye bye ute stunga Kosovo. De tani na Germani. Ah, na Germani. De flisni ju ship na Germani tani. Apoyo. Uh, finish. Um, okay. Öpin Suomea uh, Helsingin Ylipistossa, mutta uh, niit et uh, puhu Suomea hyvin. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my Finnish has almost disappeared. I understand what I learned, but to speak it actively, I don't get to speak it, unfortunately. I like it a lot, though. Uh, Le Napoletano. Napoletano per parlare con qualcuno così, Amir. Così dici? <laughs> Va bene, perché no? Sarebbe interessante. The ideal length, um, e.g., the language to be a lot. Okay, for me, learning a language, so I tend to do as much as I can or want during a day. Um, I, at the moment, during quarantine, I find that I do um, a bit of a lot of languages. Um, I find that what I do is I try and do, if I'm learning a new language, I do active study hours twice a week, normally for around an hour each. Sometimes half an hour it depends on the language, how similar it is, how much I need to concentrate. Um, and then I find that I do 10, 15 minutes a day at least of practice, um, going over what I've been doing, thinking about it as a minimum. That's my minimum uh, for language today, to move forward. Um, Kurdish, Rani, unfortunately, no, I don't speak um, Kurdish. Um, hopefully one day. Maybe improving pronunciation, intrepid guide. Um, improving pronunciation, I find that actually I don't work on my pronunciation really. Um, I find that what's helped me is listening actively, repeating sometimes after I hear something. If I hear something and I note that I'm being very conscious of how I speak, and so if I hear I'm saying something wrong or someone corrects me, I repeat back when someone ever corrects me. So I like to repeat things back to people a lot. I'm like a parrot. And um, it may sound annoying to people, but I, that's what I do. I repeat things back. I find that people tend to repeat things back when I'm A, getting it wrong, or B, pronouncing it incorrectly, or C, because maybe I've said something a bit weird and they just want to make sure that I they've understood. So I repeat it back to make sure A, understanding is there, B, I'm saying it correctly and um, see that I've acknowledged that they're saying it back to me for a reason and just socially it works well to do that. Um, so I, that's, I tend to do that and that helps. Other things I do, I listen to music, I sing, uh, much to the chagrin of my poor enduring wife. Uh, I sing and I, um, yeah, and, and that I find helps listen to TV, listen to radio in the background. It helps me to get the rhythm of a language and also helps me to pronounce things probably a bit better, more clearly, I hope. If you're understanding me in the languages you're asking me questions in, that's good. <laughs> if you're not, let me know and I will try and improve. Any advice on learning Scandinavian languages? So, um, Quain, when I learned Scandinavian languages, first of all, First of all, I learned Swedish, and and um, and we did a whole year of just studying um, pronunciation of Swedish. And our teacher said, if it, by at the end of the year, the only thing that you learn it will be to pronounce the IKEA catalog correctly in Swedish. And to be fair, that's what we could do. <laughs> Unfortunately, pronouncing pronouncing the words I could pronounce things and read Swedish quite well, I couldn't really say very much at the end of the year. Um, I could get by. Uh, we did the full colloquial Swedish course. Our teacher was actually the, the, the person, the author of Colloquial Swedish, and he was a really nice guy. I really enjoyed learning Swedish with him. He was very funny, very sweet, and gave us a lot of very good advice on learning Swedish. And um, I'd say the important things with, with every language, I would say the same thing as with I said with the Slavic. Learn what you need to know to say what you need to say. Set yourself realistic goals. They're really important. And learn what you need to know each step of the way so you can look back and say, okay, done that, done that, done that, done that, done that, done that. And do it regularly. Make yourself accountable. Set smart goals. So ones that A, make sense to you. Because like if you work 70 hours a week, realistically, you're going to study 100 hours of language as well on top of that to get to a really high level. No, be fair to yourself, be kind to yourself. Don't set yourself up for failure. Don't set yourself up for a fall. Remember that your, your mental health counts as well. Uh, you're learning a language. So 
take care of yourself, make sure that you're looking after yourselves, um, set up goals that will help you be successful. Say, set yourself a goal to learn to introduce yourself, talk about your family, talk about your friends, talk about your languages, talk about what you do as a job, talk about the weather, the kind of things you see in a book, they make sense, right? I mean, they have them in books for years for a very good reason. They make part of our, our general conversation and what we need to be able to say in the language and they're good goals to have. So I would do that. Also, when it comes to Scandinavian languages, record yourself, listen back, compare your pronunciation with that of uh, the recordings. The reason for that, particularly with a Scandinavian language like, say, Swedish, is because it has more sounds than almost any other Indo-European language. It just has more vowels. Um, they've got a lot of vowels in Swedish and long vowels, short vowels as well. So I would say do that for sure. Afrikaans as to me. I can't the Afrikaans pradni. I can't the Afrikaans pradni. I get Afrikaans geleerd naar Zuid Afrika te gaan. Maar uh, ja, ik, uh, ik moet zeggen, ik moet zeggen, uh, voor mij is Afrikaans ja, heel uh, Nederlands-achtig. <laughs> en uh, ja, ik moet denken, hoe ik kan Afrikaans praten, hoe ik kan goed Afrikaans praten. Ik kan het goed, be uh, goed begrijpen, ik versta Afrikaans goed, maar uh, om te praten en om te schrijven, voor mij is het uh, niet makkelijk. Nie. Als, um, ja, het is niet ver weg van uh, Nederlands, maar ik, ik vind, hoe vind je mijn Afrikaans kind? Is hij goed? Is hij niet goed? <laughs> Wat denk je? Oké. Raad er wat, wie dit? Gracho. Lana! Kijk, die la, gracho. Zo nou nou weer, prekrasnie fotograaf. Ja, ochtien lubju, kijk, die fotograafierisch. Там в, на Инстаграме. Очень хорошие. Спасибо большое. Это очень, очень, очень хорошо. Настя, по фавор, когда я стою в виво, потому что он говорит, что... О, много благодарю, много благодарю. Я благодарю очень много, Авила. Как хорошо. Круто. Я спрашиваю, что Нейдландс. Да, благодарю. What do I do for a living? I work for a company called The Social Element as their languages director, and I've been doing that now for a long time. And so my day job is in social media, and um, I use my languages for that work. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, origin of the German word Herbst. It's actually used related to the English word harvest. Very nice to know that. I didn't know that about the German word Herbst and it being related to the word harvest in English. I love these things. Etymology is something that fascinates me. I find I'm a kind of an, I'm an accidental etymologist. My wife and some of my friends say to me that they find one of the things, not the languages I speak, but they actually like the insights that I can sometimes give on uh, where like, words are connected and where how they interrelate, grammar, uh, vocabulary, all that kind of stuff. And they find that interesting when they're spending time with me more than the languages sometimes. And I think for me, it's an accidental. <laughs> I'm an accidentalist. I've not studied it properly, but just having studied so many languages now, I find that they come in and learning things like that from you helps me learn even more. So thank you so much for that tip on Herbst and Harvest. So we've all learned something new today. I love learning new things. Um, okay, j'ai du mal à apprendre l'allemand. Uh, well, okay, pour l'allemand, en fait, en, ce que j'ai fait, moi, j'ai appris l'allemand en Allemagne. Je parle avec les gens uh, là-bas chaque jour. Je faisais à peu près 8 heures chaque jour d'apprentissage, mais ça, c'est pas mon conseil. Moi, je dirais jamais apprendre 8 heures par jour parce que c'est... C'était vraiment quelque chose de très spécial pour moi pour un, passer un examen en Espagne de l'allemand. Et puis, euh, moi, je dirais, le mieux, c'est faire au moins deux heures par semaine, deux heures d'études de, actives, et puis étudier chaque jour un peu. En fait, ça veut dire penser activement de la langue, ce que, ce que tu as appris, ce que tu veux apprendre, ce que tu veux dire. Euh, il faut penser tout le temps à ce que tu aimerais bien expliquer en allemand. En, en allemand. Et puis... Euh, si tu as la possibilité de parler, de pratiquer avec quelqu'un, ça c'est en fait super bien parce que tu pourrais aussi utiliser ce que tu apprends pendant toute la, la semaine, pendant les heures d'apprentissage active, ce que tu pourrais faire en fait euh, pour utiliser ce que tu as appris et puis 
tu peux continuer la semaine suivante avec euh, des nouvelles choses, des, 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 des leçons euh, suivantes dans, dans le livre, dans ce que tu fais en fait, si tu utilises euh, des applications ou un livre, quoi, quoi que ce soit, et puis continuer comme ça. Ça, c'est pour moi ce que je fais maintenant. Je crois que ça marche très bien parce que ça ne pas trop de pression pour un, apprendre trop de choses euh, en même temps, en fait. Ça, ça donne un peu de liberté à comprendre, à faire ce que tu veux. Je vais voir. OK, let me see. What are my thoughts on... So, Peter, let me see. Sorry about this. On using Paul, Paul Noble. I've never used Paul Noble. Um, I've seen his face and I've seen his thing, but I've never used it. So, if anybody's got anything to share, please do share it on... Best thing is probably to share it on Facebook um, because on Instagram and I know on um, on YouTube Live, all the comments get washed away after this, which is a real shame. I try and save them so that I can look at your, your questions and get back to them and answer them again. And I will try and do that. Instagram is a bit problematic with that sometimes, but Facebook will. Okay, repeating uh, is good. The Michael, Michael, uh, the Michael Thomas method, though, Peter, I can tell you that I have used. So I used it for Japanese. And um, what I'll say to you is um, it will take you to a point where you feel quite confident to say things in, in, in a language, particularly in Japanese. This was the case for me. So when I went to Japan for the Polyglot Conference, um, the Japanese that really stuck with me is the stuff that I learned from the Michael Thomas course because it was really ingrained and it they use the natural hooks that you have in your own language, particularly English. If, you're, um, if your English is very solid, um, then it will, it will really help you to just ground the language into your English. And it makes it really easy to remember. So yeah, Michael Thomas, I, I can recommend for that. And I think if, particularly if you're new to language learning, It's a really good one to get you into it. So other friends of mine have felt found Pimsler, a similar thing. I use Pimsler for Hungarian, and I made a video actually on my Speaking Fluently channel after I did the Pimsler challenge, and I found that I did, did okay with it. Um, it's not a huge amount of words. I did find that it went a bit slow for my liking, um, but it, it, look, it worked. I mean, it worked. I could say things in, in Hungarian, and again, those words have stayed with me. Michel Thomas, though, I found actually, for my own personal taste, I actually preferred Michel Thomas. Um, but I, both of them worked well. Um, Pimsler and Michel Thomas worked well for me. Um, I've, and maybe I should get down to Paul Noble and see. Paul, if you're ever watching <laughs> and you want to help me get into your method, I'm happy to talk to you, <laughs> of course, to know how to use it best. I would like to make sure I represent methods properly. Um, and I enjoy doing that. Um, do I have any more brilliant apps for learning? Thanks. So actually, yes, I do. So an app that I'm going to share with you now, um, that a lot of you will know, and you're probably all going to go, wow, I know this app and it's great. And I know the guy right behind it is I've really got into link recently. So Steve Kaufman, Steve Kaufman fans, I know if you're out there and there are going to be lots of you out there, give me a big thumbs up right now, particularly because I'm going to really big up Steve and um, Mark and the team at Link. I'm really enjoying working with Link at the moment. I've been using it now actively for a few weeks and using it every day. And um, I find Link really, really good. Um, I wish I had a link of my own now to share with you. So if you buy it, I get some benefit from this. I totally don't get any benefit financially from, from selling or plugging link. Um, but I've, I've used it not only for myself, but also for my daughter. And my daughter is enjoying using link too. So we've done, and I'm not, I'm going to use Duolingo terminology and I'm not big on Duolingo, but Um, I'm going to use that terminology. I've actually had with my daughter a 13 day streak of using it with her on a daily basis. And she comes back to ask if we, when we can do languages again. So that's been a really pos big positive. Thank you to Link. Thank you to Steve Kaufman, everyone for putting all the work in to make that work. Everyone behind that app, um, really good job. It works in a, it works really well for me. Um, so that's my big thing for this week. Big thing for Link. <laughs> That's L-I-N-G-Q.com, link.com. So you can go and find out more. Um, when did I become interested in languages? Um, so I was interested in them from a very young age. I was interested in accents. I used to like playing with accents and dialects and speaking them. So yeah, I mean, I've been interested in them for, for as, as long as I can remember. Um, 
Thank you, Alexandra. It's very nice of you to say such nice things. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for your very nice comments, everyone. Wow, I can't believe how nice you all are. Thank you. Uh, gosto de aprender português. Português de Portugal. Eu tenho um português de Portugal muito fechado quando falo com, quando falo com o sotaque mais português. Uh, e por isso agora falo mais com a perto. <laughs> ok. Let me see. So, the other languages... Ah, otro, un nuevo per personaje cuando hablo otro idioma. Para mí no, para mí la verdad es que no. Eh, es que mucha gente dice que sí. Para mí yo tengo, yo soy Richard Cinco en todos los idiomas. A lo mejor soy Ricardo en español, Ricardo, Richard, eh, lo que sea, pero yo soy la misma persona. Lo que pasa es que la gente me entiende a lo mejor de otra manera, porque mis bromas británicas a lo mejor no quedan tan bien en otros idiomas, a veces sí, a veces no, pero yo soy el mismo en cada idioma. Para mí no me siento así como muy diferente en, en los idiomas, ¿no? A veces tengo que controlarme un poco mejor para no hablar de cierta cosa en un idioma u otro, pero aparte de eso no, me siento igual, la verdad. Excelente pregunta, sí, es verdad, es que es una excelente pregunta, me gusta mucho. Uh, ok, I love people in the languages. I love all people in the languages too, you're all amazing. Mi hongo, mi hongo a chotto. Chotto, hanashimasen, chotto. Ok, the more languages, the better, absolutely. Um, the Polyglot Conference, como... ¿Cómo creaste la compañía Polyglot Conference? Pues la conferencia, la, la, la conferencia políglota era una idea de tener lo que tenemos con la comunidad en línea, pero en vivo, así, con la gente, uh, juntándonos así de guay, hablando, charlando, así, pero en, así en vivo. Y eso era la idea, la verdad. Es que porque estábamos siempre sobre la internet, hablando así por, lo, por las redes sociales, por forum y cosas así, y yo quería estar con mi gente, y por eso tenemos la, la, la conferencia políglota ahora, y ten, también tenemos la language events so the language events is a small version really of the polyglot conference, and also we have other events like the gather, polyglot gathering and Langfest and polyglotar in Brazil so all these great events that come together um, and we get together, we celebrate languages, we celebrate each other, we get to speak to each other, break bread And I love them and I can't wait for the time that we can get together again in person to speak languages, talk about languages, to celebrate languages and cultures and the wonderful diversity we have in the world. Um, I love that we get to do that and um, I look forward to doing it again soon. Um, so if you ever get to come to the Polyglot Conference, a Polyglot Gathering, Langfest, Polyglotar, uh, there's going to be a Polyglot Cruise as well with my good friend, um, Chris Brohom next year. If you want to go on a cruise ship with some people who love languages, again, there's going to be that option too. Um, and also the language event, which is another uh, project that um, I'm helping to run. And um, please do follow us and keep up with things. On the Polygot Conference um, YouTube channel, we have all the videos coming out as well. So today I'll release a new video uh, from the Polygot Conference from Fukuoka. And then um, you get to enjoy them as they come out too so it's the cool thing right um okay so i'm getting questions about have i studied hindi or any of the indian languages do you know how much i would love to um i've studied a bit of romani and I've, i i'm not going to say i've studied hindi i haven't a uh, hindi urdu so i can say very basic things like namaste uh, mira nam richard hai. uh my chester se hu. <laughs> but that's about as far as it goes. Shukriya, and then I know I know some words, right? Because um, it, it just it's it's an Indo-European language, so of course I understand some. But um, I would love to speak them one day and speak them to a decent level as well. Why not? Um, Hola desde Colombia, ¿qué tal? Jolín, desde tantos países me gusta mucho esto. Eso sí que me fascina. Okay, some speakers' advice for French speakers. And prove their English pronunciation. So, the question back to you, uh, Juan Baptiste, is which English pronunciation would you like help with? Um, because speaking English um, depends on whether it's American. So, I mean, you know, like, you want to speak like an American or 
more like the way I speak English, though. I mean, it really depends. So for me, I love American English. I think it sounds amazing. And like that for me is, it's, it depends. I mean, really, you know, if you want to speak like an American, then there are different ways and means of doing that. And if you want to speak more like um, standard English, if you want to speak Scottish English, for example, different way of speaking as well. Also very nice pronunciation of a language. Love Scottish English. I love Scots as a language itself. But as not just, you know, just an accent in Scots. Uh, Scots is actually a different language with grammar and different things as well. It's not just uh, I'm speaking like Scots. This is Scottish English. And if I were to speak Scots, that'd be different again. Um, I don't speak Scots very well. <laughs> or if you wanted to learn a nice Irish accent, for example, you know, something like that'd be great. It'd be grand. Speak with like, or like Northern Irish, you know, a stick and out. It's great. Speak with like a different accent like that and got it really going. I think that's a really great thing to do. You can choose the kind of accent you want to speak with, basically, in a language. And all of them are good, you know, it's great. Or again, like an Australian accent, if you wanted to speak like an Aussie, you know. So, I mean, like, for me, the thing to say is, if you're speaking a language and you want to speak with a different type of accent, for me, it's really important to choose why and where you want to use that language. So, if you're learning English and you're learning in Australia, it makes a lot more sense for me to, to learn to speak like an Australian or to imitate an Australian accent to the best of your ability. So, that's what I'd say. Um, I hope that helps, but yes, it kind of probably makes the, the question a bit more complicated, but it was fun to go through the accents a little bit. Um, from this day, okay, so the, the, the Polygon conference, yeah, was fun. I started it because I wanted to take the, um, the language community online, offline, and to get people to speak on their different topics of language learning and how they use language for work and different things. Yeah, it would it, really, really cool. Um, I would love to show you some BSL. Any thoughts of general um, adversion to sign language in the public community? Uh, do you know what, Day Lily? Honestly, sign language? Yes, we need more of it. Please, 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 more sign language. Um, so um, I went to a college in Chester um, to, 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 to learn. Um, so I learned some BSL. Um, now I don't really, uh, I don't really don't really use BSL sign language. Um, problem is um, so here uh, where you know where I live, it's it, it, you know it's it's um, you know Macedonia, and here we don't we don't use BSL, so it's kind of impossible for me to to sign that. Um, so I, I've, I've signed a little bit of, um, of of Macedonian sign language, which is different and um, I, I started doing a few lessons to learn unfortunately coronavirus hit and they were cancelled so I got to learning the alphabet I got to learning basic things like for example in Macedonian sign language you, you say um what is it how is it now now I've, I've I've probably forgotten a lot of it unfortunately but yeah I mean um so this is this is Sevikam Sevikam Richard uh in Macedonian that's I, my name is uh, uh, and to spell my name would be, let me see if I can remember. So R, R, I, uh, R, I, and then Ch is Ch, I think. And then A, no, 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 I'm getting it wrong now. I'll, I'll practice and I'll try and do it again. But you've, um, yes, I think there would be no aversion. In fact, there are a lot of people who, who learn um, sign languages and please do. Um, community, you know, we'd love to hear more about sign languages. Love them. Um, uh, o seu português é igual que brasileiro. Obrigado. Uh, I don't know about that, though, John. I think you're being very kind. Angelo, parabéns por português. Obrigado. Obrigado. Go live with Luca Lampariello. Luquino, dove sei? Luquino, sei mitico, veramente. Dove sei, Luquino? Facciamo qualcosa insieme adesso. Cosa ne dici? Cosa ne pensi? Uh, é muito bom. Obrigado. Por, oh, cumprimentos para o português. Obrigado. Uh, can I do a Portuguese action in Portugal? Eu aprendi português de Portugal na universidade, então. Para mim, o português mais natural é o português de Portugal. Português europeu, então. Sim. Acho que se fazia isso 
Ah, é muito fechado, muito fechado. A ah, minha professora de português dizia sempre que eu falava com o sotaque mais de Cesores, que Portugal de, o português de Portugal... <risos> eu não sei, eu não posso dizer. Ah, Prato africano? Sim, eu prato um pouco de africano. Sim, eu prato um pouco de africano. Ah, eu prato africano. Ok, thank you very much, Kim. I'm getting to these, these messages quite slowly. So please do excuse me if I'm very, very slow at getting to them. Um, I go into a lot of detail when I get questions and I apologize. I use LinkedIn. It's awesome. Good to see you like Link2, Brent. It is awesome. I think it's really, really cool. Um, Brent, just to say, I love what you're doing with Maori and with Indonesian beautiful songs if anyone can see brent here he is a maori speaker and he also uh, speaks a number of other languages but he he made some songs recently and he put them on the if you go to the the language event um uh, page he posted them on the language event i think it was either on the auckland or on the actual page the auckland group or on the page itself and he sings some songs in indonesian and in, in maori and Uh, and also did a great interview in Maori as well. You should post that on the Auckland one, actually, uh, Brent, unless, unless that's where I saw it. I don't know if I saw it on your page or on that there, but it was really, really cool. Um, a girl called Asha from um, Poland learned Maori and is living in, in, in New Zealand. And I was just amazed at how well she could communicate in Maori. I thought she did a great job. Asha, if you're saying it's really, really kapai. <laughs> it's really fantastic. Um, yeah, kia ora, kia ora, Brent. Um, I love I love Maori. I'm really enjoying learning it. I wish I could speak it better. I'm going to get there one day. Yeah, one day. Um, ML, yeah, no, yeah, never too late for getting in. Nice to see you here. If you could be fluent, fluency is relative. Uh, for me, fluency is really relative. You can be fluent in some very basic phrases as long as you can say things. Um, you know, define what you want to define. People will define you. And I just say, let it wash over you. Whatever anyone thinks, the important thing is that you're happy with what you're doing and that you're giving out something good and positive to the world. And learning languages and supporting language learning, encouraging other people to learn is always positive. So carry on doing that, whatever anyone thinks, whatever anyone says, that's the important thing. Positivity, yeah? And carrying on with what you want to do. Um, Okay, let me see. There's a question here about para puedo aprender la declinación en alemán. Lo mejor es no aprender las declinaciones así. Para mí, lo más importante es aprender las cosas que tienes que aprender para decir lo que tienes que decir. Así que aprendiendo cosas en contexto te va a ayudar a aprender más fácilmente, más naturalmente también un idioma. Porque aprendiendo de pe a pa todas las de las declaraciones, para mí está bien, a veces te ayuda a memorizar cosas, pero para la comunicación a veces tienes más miedo porque has aprendido de pe a pa, pero no sabes decir la cosa en contexto. Así es. Sí, esos son mis, mis consejos para eso. Um, how long did it take me to learn Esperanto? It took me a few weeks to start speaking some Esperanto, but I don't speak it very well. Keen, I can get by in Esperanto. I can communicate in it, but my Esperanto is far from great. Um Germany Germany normal flat amatara. Ah, see Germanist. Ah, perché? Eu não vestir, se você me manejou um adito, eu não vestir, um marvés. Mira, sing for us, ok, I'll sing for the end. So, <laughs> sing a song, what would you like me to sing? I don't know, actually. I don't even know what to sing now, my voice is probably not its best to sing. I'd probably end up deafening you all. Um, wow, so good to see you all. The Netherlands, ok. Uh, Elenica, John, venejo para porque quero atuar na na Melissa Elenica, ela me chora, em daxi, que a mim Elenica é polio, homorfi, glossa, me parece para polio. Né, africanos escutam? Yeah, thank you, Val. Yeah, that's very kind of you. 
Yeah, Nathan, big in <laughs> Yeah, Okay, thank you very much, Keen. I'm glad you understood my Afrikaans. I'm going to have to go off now. and My time's running out on the live. It was so good to see you. Thank you all for tuning in. I really, really appreciate you all coming and meeting with me. Thank you so, so much. And I hope to see you live this time next week again. So take care, everyone. I'll see you live next week on YouTube. I will be on the right channel. So please do forgive me those who joined the wrong channel and those who didn't realize that I'd swapped by mistake. <laughs> take care, everyone. Thank you.